What's up, math scholars? It's Friday, and it's Hoover Day, so we got a big rally. We're super excited. We are not on our phones, because math scholars would never be on their phones during math class, right? All right, we had a discussion of what math scholars would do, and doing their homework every night was one of them, and not being on their phones during class was one of them. Go ahead and write down the fundamental theorem of algebra. You can just write down what I've got in red. An nth degree polynomial would have exactly n solutions. So the ones you just saw in the quiz yesterday were third degree polynomials, and they had three solutions. Today, uh, we'll be, see something with fifth, a fifth degree. How many solutions would a fifth degree polynomial have? Five. Can you believe that? We're going to do one with five solutions. This is going to be crazy. Now this is also provided that you would count all imaginary solutions and repeated solutions. So the only thing that would cause an imaginary solution is maybe using the quadratic formula and having a discriminant that's negative. And what would cause a repeated solution, you might be wondering? That's the way the graph looks, so we'll look at that shortly. All right, we're going to go ahead and look at a graph. The first thing I noticed is it's a snake. And what do you remember about snake shapes? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, but what about like the exponents in the formula? The exponents are odd. So maybe the exponent was x to the third, maybe the exponent was x to the fifth, etc. Okay? So odd shapes make snakes. Now, right here I'm seeing an x-intercept. I spy with my little i an x-intercept, and an x-intercept is a solution, right? So negative 2 is a solution. Oh, I spy with my little i another x-intercept. So 6 is another solution. Now 6 is a very special solution. Do you see how the graph just like kind of crosses through right here? That's a normal solution. But do you see how the graph just touches and turns? It's called a turning point. If that x-intercept is a turning point, that solution is a double solution. And you would actually list it out twice. So I don't know if you want to jot down a phrase like that. If the x-intercept is a turning point. You guys understand what I mean about a turning point? It's touching and turn, not crossing through. Touch and turn. Um, then that is a double solution. It is a double solution. And you literally list it out twice, and you could synthetically divide with that number twice. It's pretty cool. All right, part A. They are saying how many solutions would this equation have? Anybody know? Alexis? It's three. It's three. Now, how did you get that? Yeah, it's the highest exponent that she found was a 3, so the degree was a 3, and there'd be 3 solutions. Part B, how many zeros would this function have? And the word zero means the same exact thing as solution, which means the same exact thing as x-intercept, which we've talked about that earlier in the year. But how many solutions would this one have? Nathan? Four. Four. How'd you get that? So I said it to the class, but not to the people in the video. The first few problems in the homework, in fact, I think it's the three through nine, they just have you say how many solutions there would be. They don't have you actually find them all. Make sense? Well, don't try to do extra work. How many solutions would this equation have? Raise your hand if you know. Kayla? Good. How'd you get that? The highest exponent she could find was a four. And how many zeros would this equation have? Colin? Three. How'd you get that? Highest exponent he could see. Okay, so that's all you have to do is answer how many solutions there would be. Now, when you get to a problem like this and they say find all the solutions, that's when you're doing your real long process. I'm not going to make you do the P and Q list. I feel like we've practiced that enough. So let's just start our day off with graphing and getting a handle on what we're seeing. Okay, so let's graph this equation. X to the fifth. It kind of made me look like a snip to people in the video. All right, we did graph it, and let's talk about what we're seeing. What does this crossing point look like to you? It's hard for me to see on my smart board. A 2. If you want to confirm that, you can look in your table real quick, but they are showing me it's crossing it, too. And then, what? Why is mine look different than yours? Huh, maybe your zoom is different. Do a zoom 6. Oh, your, your equation might be wrong. I would check your equation, too. Um, okay, and then this little guy right here, he is an x-intercept, but he looks like a turning point, not a crossing point. So where's he located at? Negative 1. So we have, I'll move this out of the way, 
we have a turning point at negative 1, and we have a crossing point at 2. That's kind of a terrible drawing, but it gives us the information we need. 2 is a crossing point. Negative 1 is a turning point. So those are three of our solutions. How many solutions are there going to be? No. Five solutions. How do we know there's five solutions? That's what the highest exponent is. It's x to the fifth. All right, so we've never done an x to the fifth with five solutions. This is a lot of work. And this is why we're actually only doing one problem in our notes today. They, they take a while. We are going to start the same way we always start, and that's one round of synthetic division. So we're going to do more than one round when it's all said and done. Do you want to start with a negative one or a two? All right, they're saying two. Well, one person said two at least. So our setup would be a one, a negative four, a four, a ten, a negative thirteen, and a negative fourteen. That is a lot of numbers. Hopefully you are good at synthetic division. The biggest mistake I saw in the synthetic division yesterday was just adding down wrong. People couldn't add negative 20 to negative 3 properly. So just be very careful with your adding. You should know how to add by now. You're in high school. So drop your 1 down. 1 gets multiplied by 2, and that's 2. And now we're going to add down. What would that give me? Negative 2. Very good. And then we're going to multiply. Negative 2 times 2. What would that give me? Negative 4. Let's add down. What would we get? Good. This is tricky. What is 0 times 2? And add down, what would you have? 10. 10 times 2 is 20. Add down, what would you get? 7. And 7 times 2 is 14. Add down, awesome. We got a 0. So when you get that 0, I put a check mark right there because that's how you mathematically proved that first solution is 2. So there's 1 of our 5. Whew. Still have enough energy left because we have 4 more. You're out of energy. You needed to have that energy bar before class. All right, so we're actually going to do another round of synthetic division from here. We did see one of those last week. We saw an x to the fourth problem. Question? Um. All right, we had a great question. Um, somebody asked why we didn't start with a negative 1 right here. You could have. That would have been fine. We're actually going to do the negative 1 next, okay? You can start with whatever you want to start with, just as long as you verify all of them. So this is a negative 1. I know my mouse is kind of in the way there. I'll move it. I'm going to drop this 1 to start. What is 1 multiplied by negative 1? Negative 1. Go ahead and add straight down. What would you get? Careful, they're in both negatives. It's negative 3. Multiply negative 3 times negative 1. What would you get? Positive 3. Very good. Add straight down. What would you get? Positive 3. Positive 3 times negative 1. Negative 3. Add straight down. Get 7. Kind of short on space here. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. And add straight down. We got 0. Yay! Now, we still have too many terms to turn it into a polynomial and factor. You have to do synthetic division until you only have three terms. And then you turn it into a polynomial and you factor. So how many terms do we have? Four. You need another round of synthetic division. Do you guys know what will go here? How do you know? You're right. Very good. Negative one is a double solution. So this is absolutely what will go here. Very good. All right. One more round of synthetic. We're going to drop our one. One times negative one is negative one. Ooh, careful here. What will I get when I add straight down? Negative four. Yep. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Careful there. Just little tiny places you have to be careful. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Awesome. We just verified our third of the five solutions. So if you're making a list, we've got x equals 2 right now. We've got x equals negative 1 right now. I guess I wrote it up there. We've got x equals negative 1. There's still two left, so I'll leave room for two more in my little bubble. All right, we're going to turn into polynomial since we have three terms. x squared minus 4x plus 7. Old-fashioned factoring, sweet. What numbers multiply to 7 that add up to negative 4? <laughs> I was looking at the cases and I saw, huh? It won't work, huh? To multiply to 7, we can only use 1 and 7. That's not going to add up. This is prime. It's not factorable. 
Do you remember what happens if you have to solve something that's prime and not factorable? There will be imaginary solutions, yes. But what will we have to do mathematically? Quadratic formula, quadratic formula time! It's Friday. You should be all excited to sing the quadratic formula. A is 1. B is negative 4. I, for, I heard a few groans. I didn't hear anybody go, yippee! Yeah. Yay, the quadratic formula is like my favorite. Please don't go to pre-calculus next year and say Mrs. Harp never taught the quadratic formula. I had someone who do that, and Mr. Poland's like, I don't believe you. And he called me, and I just sing it on speakerphone to the class. And then I think they suddenly remembered. <laughs> All right, ready? X equals the opposite of B e plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, all divided by 2 times A. Well, that was fun. All right, do you remember what I had you type in first? This stuff, it's called a discriminant. So type in negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. It's just 16 minus 28. I'll also clean up my bottom and just make it a 2. So what is 16 minus 28? A discriminant right in here. Negative 12. Negative 12. Yeah, I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to replace it with a negative 12. And that's where those imaginary answers are coming. And that's why you're not seeing them on the graph. They're imaginary solutions. All right. Off to the side where you have a little bit of space, we are going to clean up that negative radical 12. So the negative comes out front and becomes an I. And then the 12, we're just going to break guys out of jail. It's 4 times 3. And 2 times 2. My board, you know how my board won't write down well. Maybe if I move it up a little bit. 4 times 3. 2 times 2. So if I was to write this, the best way to write it would be 2I radical 3. Like that. Positive or negative, 2i radical 3. The 2 got out of jail. The i was because it was negative, and the 3 stayed in because he couldn't find a friend. So did you follow all that? It's like a review from old times back in chapter 1. So if you want to leave it like this, that's great. A true scholar would simplify it one more step. A true scholar would do 4 divided by 2. What's 4 divided by 2? And then they would do 2i divided by 2. What's 2i divided by 2? Just an i, right? And so those are your remaining two solutions. I don't think I'll be able to fit them up in here, so I'll just circle them. So your first three solutions are real numbers, and your fourth and your fifth solution are imaginary numbers. Whew! Was that enough fun for one day? I think it was. So I will go ahead and put the slide up so the people in the video know what homework is. And please make sure when you're doing the homework, you um, are reading the instructions. So here's the homework. I believe these first ones are the ones where you just say how many answers they would be. And then these last ones are the ones where you actually find all the answers. And you're only doing the even, so 10, 12, and 14. So happy Friday. Thanks for watching the video.